Hi. On the workbench today is a thermal imaging camera from Kaiweitz. They sent in this for me to review. The model number is KTI-001, and it has a thermal resolution of 256 by 192. And this resolution is currently the sweet spot for all the thermal cameras out there. As usual, I will provide a product link in the video description below for those who are interested in getting one after watching this video. The packaging of this KT-1001 is a little bit unusual. The product box is huge. I can probably show you here, but it probably won't fit into the view here. You can see how big this product box is. I will put a picture here so you can take a look. And the box it was shipped in was even bigger. So when I first received it, I thought it was the coffee maker I had ordered. Anyway, the imaging camera sits in this nicely padded instrument box. As you can see, it is very nice, but it's relatively large if you want to carry it around. Like all other Kaiwi's products I have reviewed, it comes with a rather nice and comprehensive printed copy of the user manual. Of course, it is in multiple languages, as it's not this thick. And by the way, it also comes with a USB charger and a USB-C cable as well. Now, my initial reaction when I saw this thermal camera was it looks awfully similar to another thermal camera I had reviewed recently on this channel. And that one is the Mustool ET692D. And now let me put these two side by side. And you can see, besides the color difference, these two are actually virtually identical. At least from the outside. But a few key specs are different. The ET692D claims to have a 320 by 240 IR imaging sensor, which from our review you saw that it was somewhat questionable whether the resolution claim was accurate. And even if it was, the real-world IR images were not as sharp as those from other IR imagers I had reviewed with lower thermal resolutions on this channel. Anyway, as you can see, the thermal resolution from the Kaiwitz camera is actually at 256 by 192, and the temperature ranges are also slightly different between these two. On the Kaiwitz, the upper limit is much higher. It is capable of measuring up to 550 degrees Celsius, versus the 350 Celsius on the ET692D. Also, the refresh rate for the Kaiweitz is specified at 25 frames per second, whereas the ET692D is only capable of refreshing at 9 frames per second. So this tells me that if the specs are accurate here, these two devices are using two different IR imaging sensors at the very least. And we can kind of tell that if you look at the thermal imagers from the front end. If you can see here, if I remove the cap, you will see that the IR sensor looks ever so slightly different from this angle. Let me tell you what, let's actually power both of these up and take a quick look to see if we can spot any differences in the captured IR images. So remember, the Kaiwitz is on the right, so let's uh, power them on together. And you can see the boot up screen is slightly different. It looks like the boot up time of these two are rather comparable. Now, the Kaiweitz is slightly slower, and it takes a couple seconds longer to boot up. The overall boot up time, though, is right around 18 seconds, which is by no means fast, but it's not too bad either. Just to give you an idea of where the boot up time stands among the standalone thermal cameras of the same resolution I have reviewed on this channel, the Hick Micro Pocket 2, for example, boots up in just around 10 seconds. And on the slower side, the Unity UTI 692B takes roughly 22 seconds to boot up. So the boot up time is definitely on the slower side, but not the slowest. And let's just take a look at the equipment in the background there. As you can see, the captured image is actually much better on the Kaiweitz compared to the ET692D. The image is a lot less noisy. This just further proves the fact that thermal resolution is only one aspect that affects the IR image quality. Just like your regular digital camera, the image quality is not always better with higher resolution. The NETD or noise equivalent temperature difference is also a critical factor, and it directly correlates to how noisy the acquired thermal image is. For the Kaiweitz thermal camera, the NETD is specified at less than 50 millikelvins, which is quite decent. Okay, now I'm seeing that 
the button labeling are actually slightly different between these two thermal cameras as well. Well, let's check out the menu items. And let's press the menu on both of these devices. And as you can see, just by looking at it casually, it appears that both of these devices are based on very similar firmware design. And you can see the menus are pretty much identical. Now, let's see if I can move down here and let's just take a look here. Okay, the labeling are slightly different. Let's go to the settings here. The left one here is the ET692D. I can use the right arrow to go to the sub menu. And let's see on this Kiwis KTI W01. Well, it appears the buttons work slightly different. Let's uh, see here. And oh yes, we can use the enter to get into the menu item. So that actually works ever so slightly different. But nevertheless, you can see that we have pretty much the same options here. And let's just take a look at the version here. So the firmware version looks like they are different as well. But you can see that besides these minor differences, the software on these two devices are pretty much identical. Also, another noticeable difference is that Kiwitz has 32 gigabytes of built-in flash memory storage, of which 28 gigabytes are available for user images and video storage. Whereas for the ET692D, it only has 3 gigabytes of storage space. So this just tells you looks can be deceiving. This is not surprising at all, as a lot of these Chinese products are just clones of one another. So far, the KTI W01 looks like a pretty high quality thermal camera. Anyway, let me put the ET692D away and concentrate on Kiwitz. Like I mentioned in the ET692D review, I really like the integrated protective cover for the IR lens, and that applies to this Kiwitz thermal camera as well, since they share the same physical design. This is actually extremely useful if you need to carry the thermal camera around. I wish all other thermal cameras have this feature. The Unity UTI 692B I reviewed a while back, for example, does not have this lens cover, and the IR sensor is essentially exposed at all times. By the way, the KTI W01 supports blending of visual spectral image and IR image. You can use the left and right arrow to adjust the blending between these two images. Now, let's actually take a look at some of the menu items. So the image registration, that one allows you to align the visual spectral image and IR image. So let's actually take a look at that. So by the way, let's go back as I do want to show you both the IR and the visual spectral image. So let's go back here and let's do the blending. So this is good. And let's go to the menu here image registration. And now you can see we can use this to actually adjust the alignment of these two images. So for example, right now, if I just keep going up, I think right now we're actually pretty much aligned. And now if I go back, you will see that these two images, the IR and visual special image are now aligned. So this can be very useful if you're looking at an object and you don't know what you're looking at. So you can adjust the blending ratio of these two images and get a clear view of what you are observing. Now let's take a look at a few more of these menu items. Here are the photos and videos you took and they will show up here. And here is the color palette. Let's see here. By default, it looks like we have this iron color palette and I actually like that quite a lot. So let's just try another one. Let's see if we use this cool, what it looked like. And too bad you can't see the preview, but you have to actually go back, I think. Yep, for it to show up. Anyway, so let's now come back here and change it back to iron. And we have the emissivity. And depends on the material, you can set them accordingly here. Of course, you can always put your customized value here. and the settings. So you can set to auto shutdown, brightness, language, so on and so forth, and the unit. And it's all the usual stuff. So anyway, the menu is definitely very simple and very intuitive. To take a still image, you just press the trigger button here. Let me show you. And uh, you can press yes to confirm. Of course, you have to do this every single time. Now to record a video, you just long press the trigger button. So let me show you again. 
so you can start recording and I believe it does record the sound which we'll have to take a look a little bit later and uh, to see if the sound is recorded on this clip but to stop the recording you just press and hold the trigger button again now let's take a look at an Arduino board and later on a switching power supply and get a sense of how well it works if you want to use it to troubleshoot electronics. Now this thermal camera has a fixed focal length and it didn't specify the minimum focal distance. Anyway, let's take a look. As you can see, we are able to pick up the thermal signatures of some of the ICs back there, but it does get blurred if you get too close. Now this is actually pretty decent. To be fair, this is a general purpose thermal imaging camera and not specifically designed for close range observation. And now let's take a look at this switching power supply. And you can see we are able to pick up a lot of details actually. So this is actually not bad at all. Let me just tilt the switching power supply a little bit and you can see it. I'm going to actually overlay the video captured here so you can see it a little better. But as you can see, we are able to see the components heating up on this power supply. And there were a few resistors back there. You can see that we are also able to pick up. And if you recall, the ET692D was not able to pick up those resistors back there. This thermal camera is currently priced at just below $300, which is actually quite attractive given the thermal resolution and image quality. I'm going to show you some images I captured earlier and you can be the judge. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you liked the video, please remember to give it a big thumbs up and remember to subscribe to the channel for more videos like this in the future. Your participation makes videos like this possible. I will catch up with you next time.